I can choose how to walk through successes and challenges, battles and blessings. I choose to walk with grace, kindness, and wisdom. Do not succumb to the depression, the anxiety, the rage, the hatred, or the regret. Live in purpose. Let the fear fade and let faith invade. You must move forward in strength. Even when pain tries to persuade your mood to change. We all have a purpose. We all have a destiny. We all have rooms to walk into and tables to sit at and contracts to sign. We all have an assignment to advance the human race, to move a generation forward, to leave a legacy. One of the things I've discovered that people just really don't accept is the fact that at some point in your life, you are going to come to the edge of a thing. And when you get there, it's called the precipice. When you get there, you can either stand there and die or you can take the leap of faith. You don't have the luxury of staying where you are. You've been here long enough. And the only way you're going to get out of this prison that you've made yourself is if you learn the art of self-discipline. You got two options in this life. You can do what is meaningful, something that is purposeful, what makes you come alive. Or you can sit back and be miserable and be afraid to take the leap of faith. You say, Marcus, I'm afraid to take the leap of faith. I'm afraid to take action. I'm afraid to move forward. You should be terrified to stay where you are. You gotta take action. You gotta take a leap of faith. Either you die where you are standing or you make a decision to move forward. We live in a generation and in a society where there is a very poor moral compass. I, I, I've got a moral obligation to fulfill a destiny, to punch through targets, to execute the assignment, to manifest everything I believe I'm destined to have. I have a moral obligation. There are people who are attached to me. There is a price to pay when you say no to destiny. It's time to pursue what is meaningful. It is time to pursue what is purposeful. And it's going to require sacrifice. And it's going to hurt. But you'll be more miserable if you stay where you are and don't continue to move forward and don't advance and don't create and don't evolve. Now, a lot of people talk about discipline, but they don't hardly define it. It's a very simple definition. It simply means to train somebody to obey a set of rules. Training comes with rewards, but training also comes with the rod of correction. When I do well and I train hard, I win and I get a trophy and that's great. But nothing compares to the process. Nothing compares to the practice, the training. That is where champions are made. It's in the dark hours. It's behind the scenes. It's when nobody's paying attention. It's when nobody believes. It's when everybody thinks you're not the one. There are generations of people trapped in the fetters of normalcy and mediocrity. And all of a sudden, every hundred years or so in a bloodline, if you will, the one shows up. If you believe you are the one, the one that finally understands the weight of the future and the price required to fulfill that future. It's action protected. It's voice activated. There's some things you gotta say. There's some things you gotta do. There's some choices you have to make. There are some decisions that are sitting at your table. There are some parameters that you're gonna have to set up. There's some boundaries that must be established. There's some prices you gotta pay. There's some things and some people you gotta let go of. There's some places you can't go anymore. There's some sleepless nights you have to endure. There is some insomnia involved in greatness. You may not be able to eat for a few days. You may lose sleep. How you think is gonna determine your vantage point? 
Many of you listening to me, even now, you're under this impression, this false narrative, this notion that discipline is a chore. No, no, no. Discipline is a privilege. It is a privilege. It is a privilege to train. It is a privilege to be taught. It is a privilege to be coached. It is a privilege to be programmed to win, to operate under a government of champions. It is a privilege. I need you to get it out of your mind that discipline and training is a chore. It is not a chore. It is the trait of a champion. If you are going to win, if you're going to accomplish it, I don't care what room you are called to, every arena that you step in, every field that you walk on, every court, every arena, every boardroom, every person, every place, every stage of destiny requires another measure of discipline. I got places that I want to go right now. I got things that I've been called to do, people I know I got to meet, and this version of myself will not make it. I don't want to be a day late in realizing when I'm functioning in the outdated version of me. And this is when the frustration settles in and the anxiety and the trauma and the insomnia, when we are not willing to accept the fact that this version of ourselves is no longer good enough to accomplish the things that we've been called to do. I realize, like, I gotta come up. Change is not coming to me. Change is coming from me. I gotta become more disciplined. My communication has to change. My perspective has to shift. How in the world are you gonna walk into these new opportunities, meet new people, make connections, change the world to some degree, starting in your family, in your city? You gotta see stages everywhere, and every stage requires another measure of discipline. Discipline is realizing that I don't need a resource, that I don't need a handout. I need a new skill set. I need a new mindset. I don't want a handout. I don't need a favor. I don't need you to believe in me. I don't need you to see me. I don't need you to like me. I don't need you to understand me. I understand me. I like me. I love me. I'm working on me. I'm training myself. I'm conditioning myself. You can love me, hate me, like me, fear me. It doesn't matter. I will fulfill my destiny. Many of you are just flat out captives to your desires. Your subconscious mind is running the show. Your body tells you what to do, where to go, what to eat, who to hang with. You keep living life sensually and not intentionally. You are not present, you are not engaged, you are not connected. This is a call. This is an invitation into a paradigm shift. It's your time, it's your turn. Everything is about to change. So one person sees the gym as a prison and another person sees the gym as a passport. One man came within inches of losing his life and another man has never come within a hundred miles of losing his life and he only works out twice a month and somebody else works out four or five times a week. The reason why you only do it once or twice a month is because you don't see the value. You don't see the value in it. Your viewpoint is either your advantage or your assassin. Your viewpoint will either get you going or get you killed. I don't care what it is that you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to give, how you're trying to evolve, what you are looking to become, everything rises and falls on your perspective. And so if you don't start thinking right, you're not going to talk right. And if you're not talking right, you're not going to experience the world that you see in your head. I don't know who God has called you to become, but what I can tell you is if you keep seeing it the way you have seen it, you will never become it. Everybody wants next level. Everybody wants wealth and influence and everybody wants to be this esoteric novelty. But listen to me, you will never experience any of this 
showing up in your next season with the same viewpoint. You gotta see this thing differently. Stop complaining about the divorce. Stop complaining about the job loss. Stop complaining about the relocation. Stop complaining about the jealousy and the envy and the backbiting and the person that gave up on you and the person that wasn't present and the person that lied to you and the person that attempted to manipulate and control. We see a storm, we see rain, and we think depression. We think I can't do anything. Instead of thinking grass can't grow without rain, roses don't bloom without rain. Number one, there's one thing I need you to stop saying, and that is I should do something. That perspective, that viewpoint, that ideology, that philosophy, that mindset, it's gonna get you bankrupt. I should start this. I should stop that. I should forgive. I should. You don't get what you should. You get what you must have. I want you to start writing down right now. If you got to pause the video, start writing down those things that you said you should do and change that should to must. I must work out X amount of times a week. I must forgive. I must evolve. I must become. I must retain, I must grow, I must live, I must evolve, I must go to the next level, I must live in this type of house, I must drive this type of car. I don't care how bad you think the shoes are that you are wearing, there is another man in this world who would kill to walk a mile in the pair that you wear. Marcus, what does this mean? This means that what you are complaining about, what you hate, what you can't stand, what you want to walk out of, what you want to give up on. There is somebody out there that would die to be in your position. And so here's what I need you to ask yourself. Is this problem an issue or is it an opportunity? Some of you, all you've been waiting for your whole life was an opportunity. What if losing your job was the opportunity? What if the divorce is an opportunity? What if the bankruptcy is an opportunity? What if the one you love was an opportunity for you to reconnect with somebody and forgive them for the pain that they caused you? See this thing differently. What you thought was ashes was only the material you needed to begin again. Watch me, your perspective is everything. I need you to see the bigger picture. I need you to have a little gratitude. You need to learn how to smile. You need to work out. I know you hate the gym. I know you hate to lift weights. I know you hate cardio. I know you don't like drinking water. I know you don't like taking care of your temple. You think it's the hardest thing to do in the world to commit. But there is somebody who's in the grave today. And if they had another opportunity to live, they would enthusiastically, with great confidence and courage and consistency, do what you hate just to live a little longer. Find the positive, see the bigger picture. Guard your gratitude. The trial, the tribulation, the adversity, the giant is not your assassin. The giant is your opportunity. A lot of people see a breakup from a broken heart instead of a heart full of gratitude. Thank you for breaking up with me. Here's what you did. You opened up another opportunity for somebody else to come into my life. Thank you for firing me. You gave me an opportunity to explore entrepreneurship. Thank you for not believing in me. Because of you, I was able to reconnect with God and he was the lifter of my head. Thank you, thank you. I'm not bitter, I'm better. I'm not weary, I'm wiser. I'm not toxic, I'm triumphant. I see this thing differently. This season that you've entered into did not come to break you. It came to build you into the man or woman God has destined you to be. As a matter of fact, the next season, the next chapter you're about to walk into is called After This. After this, I will do what you said I could not do without you. After this, I will grow. After this, I will give. After this, I will evolve. After this, I will change everything. After this, after this, after this. I'm changing my perspective. This is not my end. This is my beginning. This is not my exodus. This is my genesis. Let's go.
Some of you don't even realize you have unfinished business. You need to go back where you left off with a new perspective. Go back to the gym. Go back to the drawing board. Go back to the business. Go back to the relationship. Go back to the burning building. You have unfinished business. All you gotta do is show up with a new game plan and a new perspective. You gotta finish business. The only way you're going to break out is with a massive string of consistent non-zero days. That's rule number one. At some point, you got to sit back and think to yourself, you know what? I've been here too long. I've thought like this too long. I've hurt too long. I've been fractured long enough. I've been broken long enough. I've been mad long enough. I've been depressed long enough. You know what? I've been here too long. It's time for me to go. Rule number two is that you are going to have to be grateful to the three U's. Call it mumbo jumbo if you want to. Newsflash. The three U's are the past you, the present you, and the future you. There's more left in that tank. Don't let anybody tell you you don't have what it takes. There is more left in your tank. Keep striving. We've got to get into this pace of grace where we are pacing ourselves and we're honoring our journey and we're honoring the people that have been planted in our lives. Let me tell you something you already know. There are enough people who have not believed in you. There are enough people who have walked away from you. There are enough people who told you, you don't have what it takes, you don't measure up, you will not finish. Don't be the weapon that is formed against you. There are enough people that are counting you out. There are enough people that are saying you can't finish. Do not join them. Somebody somewhere believes in you, even if they're not close to you. Somebody is rooting for you to keep going. Somebody is hoping that you don't quit. They are believing that you will be the difference maker, the game changer in your family. Rule number three, you are going to have to forgive yourself. I mean it. Maybe you have all the know-how, the money, the ability, strength, and talent to do whatever you want to do. But let's say you still don't do it. Now you're going to give yourself a tough time for not doing what you need to do. Pick your head up. Being disappointed in yourself causes you to be less productive. If you can forgive yourself, you can be healed from the past, equipped for the present, and cast vision for the future. It is in our nature to be very disempowering, pessimistic, negative people. Sometimes we just don't feel like moving forward. But I need you to know that there are people who are depending on you there are people that believe in you. There are people that are rooting for you and they are expecting you to win. I need you to wake up in this new day, in this moment and seize the opportunity. You are alive for a reason. Remember this, action and adaptability create opportunity. Adapt and overcome and watch everything change before your eyes. So adaptability is the quality, the gift, the ability to adapt to new circumstances. Adaptability is the capacity to be modified for a new purpose, to be moved this way and still punch through targets and reach my goals and be everything I've been called to be, but I've got to adapt to the times. Adaptability requires movement. Adaptability requires growth. Adaptability requires wisdom and knowledge and understanding and revelation and awareness. We've got to be able to recognize when we're outdated, when we need an upgrade, when we've got to go to that next level, and I can't be embarrassed about it. Adaptability is not buckling under pressure. Adaptability is understanding that in order for me to have this lifestyle that I see in my head, I'm going to have to raise my standards. This is an adjustment. This is a modification that in times past 
this version of me was good enough, but it only got me where I am. And in order for me to go to that next level, something inside of me has to change. Rule number four is the easiest, and it's three words. Exercise and books. That's it. Pretty standard advice. But when you exercise daily, you actually get smarter. You get crystal clear about the road ahead. When you exercise, you position yourself to win the war. When you exercise and you push yourself, you will test the limitations of your soul and you will become crystal clear, both internally and externally, that all you have is all you need. Someday, at some point in your life, you're going to be able to look back and say, man, I'm so glad I didn't quit. And not only you, but somebody else is waiting to walk up to you in your near future and say, I was watching you the whole time. I saw when you wanted to quit, when you were almost ready to give up and throw in the towel. And I just want to thank you for not quitting. That one life, one life could touch the lives of millions. I need you to believe in this moment that you are safe, you are supported, people believe in you, just stay determined that you have everything that you need to continue on marching forward. You are a phenomenal human being. You are worth the work. Your future is worth fighting for. So when you face storm, when you face adversity, when you face trial, when you face tribulation, in the eye of the storm, in the middle, in the core of your devastation, when you are faced with opposition, that's when you raise the heat. You don't change your message, you change your methodology. Are you understanding me? Adaptability is not buckling under pressure. Adaptability is not losing your moral compass. Adaptability is raising your voice. And so the harder life hits me, the harder I'm going to fight, the harder I'm going to believe, the harder I'm going to keep pushing, I'm going to keep going, I will persevere, and I'm going to build resilience. And so the harder life hits, the stronger I get. You've got problem-solving skill. You've got a resilience. You have a determination. You have a measure of commitment that nobody in the room has because you've been able to adapt. The moves that you are making are going to impact the lives of so many people that are depending on you to continue. So you got this. You can't quit. There are people that you have not even met yet that are waiting to meet you. It doesn't matter how broken, how weary and devastated you are right now. That pain will not last forever. At some point, it will subside. And when it does, discipline, resilience, fire, passion, power will take its place. So keep going because it's all worth it in the end. If you're going to be fully persuaded about anything, persuade yourself to keep going. And the more that you influence you, you will influence the world. So keep going until you have won some small victory for humanity. It's one tweak away. It's one adjustment away. It's one modification away. I know it hurts, but you'll be healed once you make this move. You've lived here too long. You've thought like this long enough. You've behaved like this long enough. You've been triggered long enough. Come on, you've had buttons for too many years. And people have been given permission long enough to push your buttons, to trigger you, to punk you, to corner you, to box you in, to put the lids and put the labels all over you. And you have just conformed to this place of misery. It's time to break through. You've lost long enough. You've been in your learning season long enough. It's time to apply what you've learned. It is time. It's time. It's time. Believe it. Walk in it. You owe you. Forgive you. And get on with the rest of your life. And you can read them if you want. You can read them again later if you feel like it. But honestly, man, if I spend all this time typing this out to you, and you don't allow it to be a tender to your fire, well, 
You're just letting us both down. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to do anything. But you get to choose.